Hi, welcome or welcome back. So since last episode, there have been a couple things going on with me. Um, Last episode, I was talking about introverts versus social media and how being an introvert kind of makes it harder to be on social media if that is something that you're trying to do. I know a lot of people are trying to get onto social media and just be active on social media because you never know what can come from it. But sometimes being an introvert is more difficult and sometimes you need a social media break even. I also talked about how for social media breaks I am. I really think taking social media breaks is totally valid. Like take your social media breaks because social media can be extremely overstimulating and extremely exhausting and extremely confusing as well. It can really cause a lot of confusion in your life as it has mine sometimes, you know? So back to the episode, I talked about how I thought it would be cool if I took a break from social media, let's say a week or so, and came back to tell you how I've been feeling since taking that social media break. And since I uploaded that episode, I have taken a social media break. I decided to remove the apps that are most distracting for me off of my phone, which were Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And I took those apps off my phone. Like I didn't just take them off my home screen. I didn't just like avoid the apps, you know? I literally deleted each app off my phone. Since then, I've been okay, you know, I've been fine. I think it was a lot more difficult the first day. Literally the first day and a half was a little bit difficult because I kept subconsciously scrolling to the page on my phone where that app was and I would click on the space where the app usually is, but there was nothing there. So that was a weird feeling. I had to kind of fill that time with something completely different, something I don't usually do or something that I've been wanting to do, you know? That's what's happened since then. I've you know, started reading a book again. There was this book that I've been reading that I've wanted to get back to and I did get back to it and I really want to finish this book. I started reading that again and I started a new painting, which, you know, sometimes I'm really distracted by social media, trying to figure out exactly what I want to paint and sometimes social media kind of overcomplicates it. So I just kind of got started. And may may I just say, I'm just going to squeeze in The one exception that I had with social media, okay, the one exception with this whole social media break is that I was able to keep Pinterest, okay? Be honest with me. Have you ever seen a negative comment on Pinterest? I have never seen a negative comment on Pinterest. I've never really seen a negative post on Pinterest. All I see is creative inspiration on Pinterest. Maybe that's just my Pinterest board, but very rarely, if ever, you know, do I see any type of negative comment on Pinterest? Maybe because they're not like that open and available. Like you have to do a couple of clicks to get to comments on Pinterest. You have to like, I don't really see any negativity on Pinterest. And Pinterest really just helps me creatively. It just helps me with like painting. So I kept Pinterest because I felt like, you know, I'm not on Pinterest all the time. Pinterest doesn't like suck me in like TikTok and Instagram do. So I was like, you know what? Pinterest is an exception. I love Pinterest. I think Pinterest is a great social media app and I'm so glad that it's still a positive app, you know? It never got like toxic like other apps did. I also last episode was talking about how I washed my Apple Pencil and my Apple Pencil was completely destroyed. I've got a new Apple Pencil. So I wrote my notes down for this podcast episode on my iPad using my Apple Pencil and we are good. Let's get into the topic of today's episode. Today I want to talk about being the bigger person, um, standing up for yourself. I know I have an episode on standing up for yourself. I believe it's episode three. It was a really early episode. I talked about standing up for yourself and I think my opinions have evolved since then. It has been, you know, several months. First and foremost, I want to talk about being the bigger person. I think being the bigger person in a situation is like one of the most satisfying experiences ever. It's the most satisfying feeling to walk away from a frustrating situation and you know that you were the bigger person in the situation. You know, I feel like that is an automatic win, you know? So I want to talk about some situations where I've had to consciously tell myself to be the bigger person, things that I'm working on when it comes to standing up for myself. So 
The first instance that I think is really easy to come across someone who is frustrated or angry is when you're working. I mean, I know a lot of people have worked with customers, you know, they've worked in food service, they've worked as a cashier, they've worked in general merchandise or something like that. In all of those positions, you have to work with customers in some form and usually you know sometimes I'll say whenever a customer is coming up to you and asking you a question or doing something with your help they have some form of an issue that you have to resolve sometimes that person can be easygoing and really help you through this issue as well but other times that person can be extremely frustrated and extremely agitated for whatever reason And as you're trying to help them solve their problem, you have to deal with that agitation um, that they have. And sometimes it just makes the entire situation more frustrating. I've had plenty of situations, mostly situations where I was working as a cashier, which was years ago. But you come across many, many customers as a cashier, you know, more than maybe the person that's on the floor stocking the shelves more than the person that's at the customer service desk. I feel like you, as a cashier, you come across the most people because that's how people are making transactions. They're, you know, paying with you and, you know, leaving the store, that's how they do it. So you're dealing with, and you're handling people's money. You know, you're probably dealing with a wider variety of people than maybe, you know, another person that's working there might be. There have been plenty of times where people have come up to me with issues that were very, very minor, that could be an easy fix, but they were extremely frustrated for whatever reason. And I've noticed this lately. Some people, a lot of people come into the situation with high levels of frustration. I feel like it's more normal to come into a situation with low levels of frustration. And then if things aren't working out, yeah, then I get becoming more and more frustrated. But I've never experienced until working as a cashier people coming up to you with a minor issue that's an easy fix, but they're so frustrated and they're targeting you and they're angry at you for what you didn't, you don't know this person from anything, but as you solve their problem, then they get more and more calm, you know, like it's the weirdest thing. Like as you show them that it's an easy fix, then they get calm, you know? So when someone comes up to me, extremely frustrated oh I don't like this item it's terrible it doesn't work I'm never buying buying this item again you could do one of two things I think you could get frustrated just as frustrated as they are or you could remain calm and make them realize that their frustration and their anger is completely unnecessary so that you can bring them down to uh one okay because they're on 10 right now they need to go down to like one okay That feeling of being able to do that is such a satisfying feeling. Making that person feel like, okay, why was I frustrated in the first place? Why was I being mean to this cashier who's just trying to help me? She's being really calm right now. She's being really nice. Maybe I should just calm down with her, you know? Being able to do that is such a satisfying feeling. I don't know what it is. So, Oh, that's the rocket that I saw last night. Guys, I saw a rocket last night. Okay, first of all, in Florida, you see rockets all the time. Sorry, this is totally, you know, irrelevant. But I was in a drive-thru and I look ahead of me and there is this huge ball of fire in the sky. I thought it was a meteor. I thought we were going to die. I thought that was it. No, it was a rocket, okay? It was the most insane thing I've ever seen because I've seen rockets before, but I don't know. That one looked really, really different. I live in Florida. Rockets go off all the time. I've seen a rocket before, but that rocket looked really, really crazy. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. And then it just disappeared. It was the craziest thing. Anyway, where was I? Yeah. So being the bigger person in a situation, it is very, very satisfying. There have been so many instances where I've told myself, don't stoop to their level. Don't be as angry as they are because if you do that you know no one is going to benefit here it's just going to be frustrating all around for everybody so if I go into this situation much more calm than this person is coming at me then first of all you look crazy I don't look crazy okay I'm just trying to help you solve this problem here you know and I think that's such a cool feeling to have that you are able to solve a problem calmly and bring that customer back down to a one. Another instance that I think is extremely important, and this comes with a story time actually, road rage. 
be the bigger person, okay? I urge you to be the bigger person in road rage, especially if you're like on the highway. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just be the bigger person. There's angry people on the road everywhere. And it's kind of just difficult to avoid completely because, you know, there's people everywhere. There's people driving everywhere. You're going to have to deal with road rage and angry people on the road because you're going too slow when in reality you're not. They're just in a rush for absolutely no reason. So do not stoop to anyone's level when it comes to road road rage. I cannot, ex- I, I cannot emphasize that more, okay? Um, story time. And I'm not sure if I told the story time on this podcast, but I was driving on the highway and I was chilling. I was going somewhere, you know, I wasn't like in a super rush or anything. And I may have told the story already. I don't know. But I'm driving on the highway and I'm going, you know, I'm in the fast lane, okay? And I'm going kind of fast. I'm not going to lie. You know, I'm driving or whatever, and I look in my rearview mirror, and there is a driver that is so close to my bumper that I cannot even see his headlights. Okay, it's like a in like a white pickup truck, and I was like, "Oh crap, I'm going way too slow for this dude," even though I was not going too slow at all. Let me get over so that this dude can get around me, so that he can go and I can have nothing to do with him. So I get over in the right lane, and this guy literally just follows me into the right lane. Like he just gets right back behind me. So I'm like, okay, that's weird. Like, wouldn't he want to get around me if I'm going too slow? And I look back again in my rearview mirror and he's making some type of angry gestures like in the in the windshield. And I'm like, is he doing that to me? Because I'm trying to help him like get past me if I'm going too slow. You know, that kind of freaked me out. So I move over again, right? I move over back into the fast lane and, you know, speed up a little bit because he's kind of freaking me out. And he moves right back behind me. And I'm just like, what is going on right now? Is he playing with me right now? And at this point, I'm kind of scared because I don't want anything to do with this guy. He seems confused and he's following me for whatever reason. So I'm like, I need to get as far away from this dude as possible. So I get over into the right lane again and I get over into the next right lane because there's three lanes and I drive past a large truck And I'm kind of like using the truck in a way to block me from him, from his sight. Um, He didn't follow me that time, but as soon as he was able to see me again, he pulls up and gives me the middle finger for whatever reason and starts yelling stuff at me. I mean, his window's up, but he's yelling, okay? I don't know what he's yelling. I don't know what I did, but... All I know is I wanted absolutely no part of that situation. I don't know who this man is. I don't know what he's trying to do. I don't know why he's angry. I don't know what he's capable of. So I'm not going to engage with that in any way, okay? It might be extremely frustrating in the moment. I know how frustrating stuff like that is, but... I want absolutely no part of that. Like, no parts at all. Because, again, I don't know what he's capable of. I don't know why he's angry. So, in any situation like that, I feel like it's extremely important to just ignore and get home alive, you know? Because road rage is extremely scary for multiple reasons. Um, I don't think that you should engage in that in any way, no matter how frustrating it could be. Because, you, I feel like either way, you just want to get out of this situation, okay? You just want to get out of the situation and move on with your life. You don't want anything to have to follow you or you don't want to get injured in any way. So just ignore it. It's not worth engaging with it. Just go. Are you going to be frustrated? Probably. But guess what? A lot of things make us frustrated. That's just another one of them. So I think not engaging automatically makes you the bigger person in that situation so I wouldn't do it I wouldn't bother with it I would just be frustrated in the moment and then let it go you know lately I've been substitute teaching and I've been substitute teaching for middle and elementary school and lately I've been just like listening to their conversations not like in a creepy way I'm just like listening to the way that they're thinking because I don't really remember how I thought like when I was in middle school I don't remember like the way my mind worked and listening to these younger people talk it kind of just like reminds me of that time period where I just I don't know I just don't remember how I really thought during that time and younger people like they don't have that they don't have that idea in their mind of like being the bigger person all the time like I feel like middle school students if someone makes them angry they automatically want to fight if someone says something mean to them they automatically just want to fight them they want to like do I don't know it's it's the craziest thing like they want to argue back they want to like just yell they want to win the conversation because being the bigger person at that age I think is corny I think you know you want to 
you want to have the last word. You want to like be the person that has the best comeback, you know? But it's so interesting to watch them. And I just want to like say, just like, just be the bigger person. Don't engage in it, you know? Because I feel like if if you are able to ignore the situation and be unfazed by somebody that is being rude to you or being mean to you, and you can just like brush it off, I feel like that's an automatic win. Like you won. If someone is honestly just being stupid, like don't engage in it. Like don't stoop to their level because then you're going to look like you're on their level once you stoop to their level, you know? Just don't engage and I feel like you look way cooler if you are able to brush it off and be the bigger person in the situation so I wish I could really tell them that I mean of course you could as a role model as someone that's like actually you know running the class for a minute but I don't know I feel like they wouldn't listen to me but that's just what I've observed as a substitute teacher another situation where I feel like being the bigger person is extremely necessary is when you're on social media um If you're active on social media, if you have a public account on social media, if you are an influencer on social media in some way, you're bound to get negative comments about something. If you have if you have any form of a following and you're posting something about something, you're bound to get negative comments about anything. You know, it's it's your go. It's going to happen. Social media is riddled with negative comments, you know. There have been times where I've opened the comment section of someone else's Instagram just because that's what you do on social media. I don't know. I'm talking about like an actual influencer. And I would like look at the comments and I just see a bunch of negative comments about like, you know, something that is completely either not their problem or extremely unnecessary to be commenting on. And it's just like, for one, what makes you really go and comment these things I just don't understand like people have just like the time to really argue with someone that they don't even know you know like it's just I don't know it's I don't I don't understand it I really do not especially when like you ever go into a comment section and all the comments say the same thing about one specific aspect of the video but someone still people still keep commenting the same thing like okay this person gets it okay you didn't like the pants that she was wearing in the video why does every single person that has to come and comment that why do you have to come and comment that like why do you have to add to that comment everyone already said it why do you have to say it too you know I can't stand that when I see a multitude of the same comment from different people you know oh that is like a pet peeve of mine I cannot stand that I don't know it's just crazy but what are you gonna do Are you going to engage in the negativity? Are you going to stoop to their level and insult them back? Or are you going to be the bigger person and not respond? Or just like delete their comment? Like it doesn't like I feel like not responding to comments when I see people not respond to comments that are negative. I feel like that's cool. No need to engage in this. These people do not know you. Yes. Do you have a social media profile that's public? Are you an influencer? Maybe. Yes. Do you have to engage in those negative comments? No, you don't have to do that. And I think that stooping down to that person's level to engage in the comments or to defend yourself, um, I feel like it's not necessary because those people do not know you at all. So it's not worth it. You know, I've gotten comments I haven't gotten like any like seriously negative comments about anything, you know, but I've gotten comments about like my artwork that say, I think I said this in like the last episode that say like, oh, this person doesn't look like the person that you were trying to paint. What am I going to do? Comment back? Like, I don't like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, I'm not going to sit here and really engage in this and waste my time responding to this person that has no idea who I am no idea what my ideas are like they you know it's not worth responding to negative comments they want you to engage and if you don't eh, they just got a negative comment just sitting on your page for what you know they look like the the negative person there and that's really frustrating so don't engage in negative comments I can't stand negative comments but that's what social media is if that's what it's become it gives people the ability to just like say whatever they want whenever it's on their mind and not even think about what that could potentially cause in the other person because they're behind a screen you know they're behind a screen so anyway I also wanted to talk about times where standing up for yourself is necessary being the bigger person means that you don't have to engage in the situation in order to you know really I guess let's say win an argument you know you don't have to engage in the situation to defend yourself But standing up for yourself, I feel like it's extremely different because you have to engage in whatever this argument is in order to 
defend yourself, you know? Things like road rage and social media comments, I feel like it's not worth, like, defending yourself because there's no need to, you know? It's not worth the possible outcomes or whatever but there's other times that I feel like defending yourself is completely necessary I was going to say like customer service is not a time to defend yourself but I actually don't think that's true sometimes in customer service customers can be really extremely rude for absolutely no reason and they can start to like do things like insult literally insult you and that's a time where I think it's okay to stand up for yourself. If a customer comes in and they're just mad about a product for whatever reason and they're just frustrated for whatever reason, I feel like don't stoop to their level. Just figure out what the, whatever this transaction is and just keep it moving. But sometimes customers can be literally mean directly to you and say things that are actually hurtful to you just because of, I don't know, they're in a bad mood. That's when I think standing up for yourself is okay in a customer service situation. I know, like, you know, they say customer's always right, but that doesn't make it okay for them to just, like, walk all over you. And I think it's kind of hard to figure out how to defend yourself or stand up for yourself in a way that is friendly to customer service, you know, that, that works with customer service. I've had times where customers have literally come up to me and told me, you don't know what you're doing. I need someone else. You have no idea how to do your job, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't stand up for myself because I didn't know where that line was where like, you know, you can start standing up for yourself. You have to be nice all the time to customers because the customer is always right. That's what I thought. But I felt like that would have been a perfect time to like stand up for myself and and say something if it really did make me feel like garbage, you know? Customers, they do that all the time. I feel like you're allowed to say something if it really does make you uncomfortable. I had a customer try to paint me to be some type of idiot person that doesn't know what I'm doing. They treated me like absolute garbage like I didn't know like I I don't know I don't know where people come up with this like stuff it's just so frustrating because in the moment sometimes as a you know cashier or someone that's working with customers you just can't figure out how exactly to stand up for yourself without being mean to the customer you know but anyway oh my gosh I think it's okay to stand up for yourself when working with customers I feel like if someone ever makes you feel strongly about something in a negative way if someone hurts your feelings in a way and it really makes you feel betrayed or something and they try to tell you that you know what you're thinking is crazy or you know you're wrong or blah 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 I feel like it's okay to stand up for yourself and tell that person exactly how they made you feel you know whether they're friends family you know whatever I feel like it's or you know strangers whatever I feel like it's extremely important to stand up for yourself and tell that person how they made you feel so they are aware. There have been many times where I have left a situation talking to a family member or a friend or a, I don't know, like again, customer service where I felt like, tag, I really wish that I said what was really on my mind. I really wish I, I told that person that, that they made me feel this this certain way. Like maybe you shouldn't like curse them out but like maybe you should just tell them that you know how they made you feel wasn't right like that was wrong you know I feel like there's times when if you're telling someone how you feel about something as well they may gaslight you wait is that the right word hold on one second okay it's a specific type of manipulation where the manipulator is trying to get someone else to question their own reality memory or perception I got that from NBC news.com when you're telling someone else how they made you feel in a situation especially if it's negative they may try to like gaslight you in a way and I feel like that's the perfect time to stand up for yourself and tell them like no this is how I felt they might be like no I think you know wh- whatever you felt that was on you like that's crazy like I wasn't trying to do that blah 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 if you felt a certain way in the situation back it like stand behind it and tell that person how you felt and don't like back down just because they're gaslighting you going into like family I feel like it's kind of more difficult to stand up for yourself when it comes to family why because they're your family you don't want to like stand up for yourself and then make somebody mad and then like a family member is mad at you I totally get that but I feel like standing up for yourself in front of family is extremely necessary because you are a person too There's a lot of times when family members sometimes, especially older family members, they'll like start asking you a bunch of questions. And sometimes these questions are something that you don't feel totally comfortable answering right now in this moment. And you'd rather not answer these questions. Why? 
maybe they're extremely personal maybe you haven't made a decision on something yet and they're asking you like what's going on what's doing you know whatever say you are not sure if you want to go to college or not and your family members are asking you like what's your decision where are you going blah 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 what's your major going to be but you have to tell them that you don't want to go to college but that's not something that you're ready to talk about yet because it's a decision that you're in the process of making I feel like it's okay to not want to answer the question you know and I feel like a lot of older people they think that whenever they're asking a younger person a question they have to answer it why because you're supposed to respect your elders and blah 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 you know I feel like we're moving into especially this generation like we feel the need to express the fact that we're people too and we don't have to answer your question just because you're older than me you know and I think that's okay I I really do and I think that's a part of Gen Z that I I actually do like I think respecting your elders to a certain extent is extremely important but I think that whenever it's invading your privacy or it's like a question that's invading your privacy or a situation that's like kind of you know you feel uncomfortable talking about right now it's okay to say I'm uncomfortable answering that question right now or I don't want to talk about that right now it shouldn't be a crime because you don't want to answer their question just because they're older than you you know that's a time where standing up for yourself is okay I feel like I I think but I think both being the bigger person and standing up for yourself I think those are both necessary parts of life and I also think that they're both satisfying feelings knowing that you are able to be the bigger person in a situation and not stoop to the other person's level like I said before is an automatic win so I think they're both extremely important and as an introverted person it's something that both things are something that I'm working on I mean being the bigger person is something I feel like it's a little bit easier for me but standing up for yourself it, it comes a little bit more difficult for me but they're both something that I'm working on you know simultaneously I'm like I'm trying to get better at a lot of different things and those two things are something that you know are on that list so thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode this is the introverts talk 2 podcast and my name is Kirsten I'm your host I hope to have you back listening to the next episode I hope you enjoyed this episode if you want to follow me on my socials for this podcast my Instagram is at introverts talk 2 and my TikTok is at introverts talk 2 podcast so those are my socials for this podcast Thank you for listening. I'm done. I digress. Goodbye.